the Chidi X Plus 4 has a problem. A number of people have found a fault with their 3D printers that they claim poses a fire risk. Should you be worried or are things being blown out of proportion? In this video, I'll be explaining everything and I'm going to tell you in simple terms whether you need to be concerned, what you need to do immediately to ensure your printer is safe. And also I'll tell you what Chidi had to say about all of it directly from a conversation I had with their CEO. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Firstly, as this is a safety issue, I'm not gonna do that hang around till the end of the video to get that one key bit of information thing or anything like that. If you own a Chidi X Plus 4, you need to upgrade your firmware to the latest one that's available. Chidi have implemented a change to the printer's configuration, which will significantly limit the issue we're going to discuss here. The firmware update will take a little while, which will give you time to come back here and watch the rest of this video where I explain everything else. I'll show you how to update the firmware later if you don't know how, but everything you need is either on or linked from the Chidi website, which is where you'll need to go to get the firmware. So what's going on and should you be worried? The issue with the X Plus 4 is that depending where you live, there is a component that can overheat when the chamber heater is used for a prolonged period of time. Now, I will say here that I'm not an electrical engineer, so take my explanation with that in mind. The component that can overheat is located on a relay board inside the back cover of the printer. This relay board supplies power to the chamber heater and is quite normal for components like this to heat up. However, it appears that if you're running the original firmware, there is one component on this relay board that can heat up beyond the level it was designed to tolerate when you run the chamber heater for a long time. When this component overheats, it emits smoke, which is what you may have seen from either your own machine or from some of the videos which are circulating online. However, whether this can actually happen to your Plus 4's relay board will depend on where you live. The reason for this is that the voltage that the relay board is working with will change the temperature that this component gets to. If, like me, you live in the UK or anywhere else with 220 to 240 volt mains electricity, then there is no known problem with using your X Plus 4 with the updated firmware. What I haven't been able to 100% confirm though is whether there's any issue with using your Plus 4 and chamber heater on the original firmware. So please just update the firmware to be sure. If, however, you live in a country that uses lower mains voltage, say 110 to 120 volt, then it's very likely that you'll encounter this overheating issue if you use the chamber heater and you don't update your firmware. While there are other areas that use lower mains voltages, the most likely areas for issues are North America, some South American countries, and Japan. If you live in one of these lower voltage areas, then make sure you watch the rest of the video as it's very likely you'll need to change some parts. Thankfully, it's not a huge job and most will be able to complete the replacement in a relatively short amount of time. So what does the latest firmware upgrade do exactly to try and fix things? Well, it's my understanding that what Chidi have done with the firmware update is to change the rate at which the chamber heater can heat up. This in turn reduces the amount of energy passing through the relay board, which reduces the temperature it can reach. This does mean that it will take a little bit longer to heat the print chamber on your Chidi X Plus 4, but unfortunately, this is just what it's gonna to take to keep things within safe levels for now. If this issue with the X Plus 4 has left you concerned about using your 3D printer, but you still have something you need to print, why not consider using PCBWay? PCBWay now have extensive 3D printing, CNC machining, plus many other manufacturing options to help you get that project completed without using your own machines. Check out the links in the description to see their full capabilities. Now, back to the Plus 4's issues. So what if you live in one of these lower mains voltage countries and you've updated your firmware? Is there anything else to do? Well, it depends. If you haven't used your chamber heater at all before updating the firmware, then there's a good chance that your relay board won't be damaged. However, my advice is to change the relay board with an upgraded one when you're offered one by Chidi. Upgraded boards have already been sent out to users who've contacted Chidi about this issue. However, as I'm filming, as yet, Chidi haven't actually contacted all customers to tell them about the problem. As there was no official response from Chidi, and this is the third 3D printer I've owned from them, I decided to contact them to see what was going on and what they were doing about it. During our conversations, I received a reply directly from their CEO explaining things and their progress on fixing this issue. He also said that he was happy for me to share the contents of our conversation with you, my viewers. 
Firstly, Chidi wanted to stress that their priority has been in finding the best solution to this issue and that they will make a public statement once everything has been confirmed and solved. I'll read the next part directly from the email I received. Following extensive testing, we've observed that in 110 volt areas under extended full load operation, the high temperatures can accelerate aging of the inductor, resulting in blackened coils in some cases. Please rest assured that there is no fire risk associated with this issue and no fire has been reported so far. To address this, we are offering the following solution. Number one, free replacement heater power board. In 110 volt areas, we will provide free optimized replacement heater power board, which only takes 10 minutes to replace. Two, extended warranty for all users who purchase the Chidi X Plus 4. We will extend the warranty for one year. Then as a more personal note to me, they say that they completely understand if I don't want to recommend the X Plus 4 to my viewers because of this issue. They also say that they decided to communicate with me on this issue as that they believe that integrity is the basis of all cooperation and that they hope that I can deliver the latest and accurate news to my audience. So let's just digest all of that. Firstly, Chidi say that they have been conducting extensive testing and have noted what they describe as accelerated aging of the inductor, which I believe is the component on the board with the copper coils. They say that this is only happening in 110 volt areas under extended full load operation. However, the most important point is that they say there is no fire risk and there have been no reported fires. From what I've seen, although smoking printers don't inspire confidence, I can't actually disagree with anything they've said. There are no reported fires that I know of and I don't have the knowledge to say for certain whether there is any fire risk on any Chidi machines. Someone who has been very vocal on this issue is Grant from the YouTube channel 3D Musketeers. Grant has been extensively testing this issue on his Plus 4 and doing his best to highlight any hazards with actual measured figures. Now some have questioned his testing methods but it's clear to see even with the upgraded firmware the original part is getting too hot. Even after the firmware update, Grant has measured the part that Chidi are calling the inductor at over 200 degrees C after about 20 minutes to half an hour of continuous use of the chamber heater. For me, this is too hot and I would want to replace that board. Chidi told me that they will be offering upgraded boards to everybody who lives in 110 volt areas and I've seen online that some users have already started to receive these upgraded boards. Unfortunately, all I currently have to go on is a low quality picture and no actual specifications. However, you'd like to believe that this obviously revised relay board is capable of doing what it should. So is this enough? And if you own an X plus four and use 110 volts, what should you do? Well, firstly, I believe that Chidi should be doing more to tell owners about this problem. It's clear that there will be a significant number of users who haven't upgraded their firmware, don't know about this issue, and will be using their chamber heater on 110 volts with the original board. Those customers are at a very high risk of overheating components in their 3D printer, possibly when they're not around to turn it off. Yes, no fires have been reported so far, but when electrical components are pushed beyond their limits, the results can be unpredictable. I believe that it is the manufacturer's responsibility to notify their customers when a fault is found with one of their products. Owners shouldn't be expected to watch YouTube, join Facebook groups, or follow Twitter or X accounts to find out that there's a problem with something they've bought. I have, of course, told Chidi all of this, and whilst they have said that they're going to make a public statement, as yet they haven't confirmed that they are going to directly contact customers that are affected. Also, it's still unclear what this optimized replacement board consists of. What it should be is a board that allows full use of the chamber heater with no firmware restrictions. These machines run clipper firmware, which is very easy to modify. What we can't have is machines that are capable of melting some of their components if you accidentally enter the wrong figure in a text file or roll back the firmware to an earlier version. Chidi also say that the board only takes 10 minutes to replace. To test this out and see how big a job it is, I removed my own board and then refitted it. If you receive an updated board, then hopefully this will help you decide whether you want to change it yourself. First, you need to turn off the power and remove the power lead. This is the first issue with replacing this board yourself. The relay board is connected directly to the main supply and failing to disconnect the power would leave you with a huge risk of electrocution. 
assuming you are capable and potentially qualified to be working with mains electricity, next you need to remove first the rear access panel and fan, and then the whole rear panel. The rear panel is held on with screws, which are easy to remove, but are not all the same, so be careful to note what came from where. Once you have all of the screws removed, I found out the hard way that what you actually need to do is flex the middle of the panel out to disengage the plastic clips. I broke one of mine, but it doesn't stop it going back on if you do the same. With the rear panel removed, you'll be able to access the additional relay board cover. This is held on with another four screws and also has a warning label about working with mains voltages. As I say, if you are competent in working with mains voltages, then you can remove this cover, but if not, please don't proceed. With the cover removed, you can either disconnect all of the wires or remove the board by undoing the screw securing it first and then remove all the wires when it's easier to access. It appears from the pictures that the new board is similar enough to the old board that replacing it will just be a case of reversing the removal process. But make sure that you pay close attention as to which wires go to which terminals. The rear cover snaps back into place before all of the screws go back in. Now this did take a little bit longer than 10 minutes, but not that much. My main reservations about owners completing this repair themselves is messing with the mains voltages. An electric shock from mains voltages can be lethal and nobody should be touching it unless they're 100% sure they're competent to do so. I hope now that you have a better idea of what the replacement involves before you start taking things apart. The other important part to this whole process, especially before you receive a replacement board, is to upgrade your firmware. At the point of making this firmware, the latest update is version 1.4.3, and anything from this version onwards should have the updated configuration to prevent further damage to your relay board. If your current firmware version is version 1.4.0 or higher, then you can just select to update the firmware online via the printer's menu. If, like me, your current firmware is lower than this, then you'll need to download the firmware from the link in the description unzip the files and then put the QD update file in the root directory on the supplied USB stick and insert it into the printer's USB port. From there you just select the option for an offline update. Once your firmware is updated then you should be protected from damaging your original relay board any further but I would change that relay board as soon as you receive the upgraded one. If you haven't heard anything from Chidi then contact them yourself using the email address in the description. So hopefully this impromptu video has at least clarified some of the conjecture about this issue and hopefully reassured you that there is more to come from Chidi, so watch this space. My review video of the X Plus 4 was actually going to be quite positive and it still has the potential to be as long as this problem is fixed properly. I think it goes without saying that no electronic products should be shipped out with this kind of issue and I hope that lessons are learned from the experience. I've said it before, but reviewing these machines comes with the responsibility to try and find all possible problems and hold manufacturers to account. Unfortunately, some are very keen to release review videos as soon as possible to try and be the first, but this is something that I try very hard to avoid. Whilst those early videos do get a lot of views, it can actually take weeks and many hours of printing to find all the potential little problems with a new machine. I always ensure that I tell my viewers everything that I find without sugarcoating anything. This unfortunately means that some manufacturers don't send me products because they're afraid of my honesty and respect for my viewers. Chidi have never shied away from my review terms and I hope that they get this issue fixed fully and quickly so that I can carry on with my review and let you know what I really think. But until we know the full outcome, I'm afraid you won't be seeing an X Plus 4 review from me. I've seen that other content creators like Daniel from ModBot have said the same thing and I respect his position and integrity on holding manufacturers to account in the same way. So that's as much as we know right now. There is a problem if you live in an area with lower mains voltage, but there is a solution from Chidi. But it's not yet clear exactly what that consists of and whether it will be offered to all affected owners or just those who ask for it. Once there is some more information though, I will either update this video's description or I'll put out some other form of content. So hit subscribe if you don't want to miss out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.